So here, I'm okay with this subject line. What I like about this subject line is it's sort of like people are going to click this. I mean, this is just this is just an age-old problem, how to get clients as a newbie, right? And that's what everybody's kind of struggling with. So I think that this is a this very straightforward. And if you're on my list and you already know, like, and trust me, and this pops up in your inbox, you're probably going to at least open it, right? When just starting out, most copywriters run into the same big problem, how to get clients when you have no experience. Okay, listen, if you go pitching yourself to folks you want to work with and tell them you're brand new to the copy game, fat chance you'll ever hear back from them. So how do you get experience if no one will hire you unless you have experience? Talk about a catch-22. Well, that's where persuasion tricks come into play. There's a sneaky psychology hack you can use, sort of like an authority shortcut for credibility. <laughs> and no, it isn't building value in some stupid Facebook group. Double, triple, a thousand times, no. I have never once considered hiring a single writer based on how much time they wasted on Facebook, but I digress. Because all you need is this authority hack and your chances of landing a copywriting, how about we just say a copywriting gig will absolutely skyrocket. Click here for the details, okay? So again, like I, I tease this by reversing, and I don't actually lean into it, I kind of lean away from what it is not. So I feel like when I started to write this, uh, when I when I decided to, so let's let's kind of look at some of the, the things I altered. When just starting out, copywriters run into the same big problem: how to get clients when you have no experience. Listen, if you go pitching yourself, so I'm kind of like telling you where you're going to mess up. So here, it's a real challenge. Like that's kind of one of those things that I would call obvious BS. Like they know it's a challenge. You don't have to tell them it's a challenge. But if you go pitching yourself and tell them, so it's like it's kind of the same thing here. I was like skip straight to that. Listen, you go pitching yourself to folks you want to work with and tell them. Yeah, let's say, listen, if you go pitching yourself, telling people you're brand new to the copy game, fat chance you'll ever hear back from them. That's so much simpler. So, so how do you get experience if no one will hire you unless you have experience? Talk about a catch-22. Still kind of relating to challenge. Well, this is, that's right. Okay, so this is kind of the rub I had with the original is that it was basically like, fortunately, there's a trick. Use the trick and you get the result. There's nothing really there. There's no teasing. So what I did was I said, well, that's where persuasion tricks come into play. Like, okay, instead of just saying there is a trick, use this trick and it will work. So that's where you have to start using persuasion tricks, all right? There's a sneaky psychology hack you can use. All right, so reading this, comparing it to the thing that I was just, you know, poo-pooing all over, this is too similar in my opinion. This is kind of doing the same crime. So I think what I can probably do here is... Well, that's where persuasion tricks come into play. A particularly effective one is this weird authority shortcut for instant credibility, okay? So think about the new easy, safe, and big, right? Authority shortcut, instant credibility. So we're talking about instant results. Weird authority shortcut insinuates that this is easy and it's fast results. All right, now I'm actually going to destroy an objection right here, which is this is this is both just me getting on my soapbox because I think uh, copywriters spend way too much time vomiting on Facebook and not making money with copy. So I think another thing that this is pertinent, this is I would even call this value for my readers, this line. This line is such a, I feel like would save so many people. And the people inside, the juniors on my team right now can speak to this. The, the, the juniors who are on my team now, uh, who have seen the other side of the curtain, right? And they realize, oh my God, I wasted so much time on Facebook. I tell you, there are guys who, when I'm hiring people, I've, I've talked about this before. I'm asking, I don't, you'd be surprised. You can't really do a hire based on, a writing sample because when it comes to writing samples, there could have been a chief involved. It could have been written by multiple people, or there could have been like so many chefs in that kitchen that made it great. A great marketing team might've scaled it up in a way that you couldn't have done in a different company. Like, there's so many factors that go around like, here's my writing samples and you get it. And it's like, okay, but then you get the person and they're whack. Like their writing is terrible. So that that's a real, that's a real thing you got to worry about when hiring people. So for me, the one thing I've never, ever done is looked at their Facebook and said, like, all right, bro, how much value do you provide? I don't care. 
<laughs> so what I do is I ask them strictly about like for to be on my team is I, I basically want like a zealot. I want like a crazy zealot person who's like obsessed with being really, really great at copy. And then the writing assignment, I create the writing assignment where I'll send them like, I don't want to give away too much of the secret sauce because then if I send you a writing assignment, you, you, you'll cheat. But I essentially I'm looking for a person who follows instructions very carefully. And anyone who's very like gung ho about copy follows the instructions very carefully. I can, uh, teach them to be really good. All they got to do is really, I think in my opinion is follow the steps and the patterns. And that's, I think copy is just mostly patterns anyway. So again, I, I so this, with this one line right here, in my opinion, on this email is a little bit of me getting on my soapbox, but also like dudes, my people copy squad, you don't have to deliver value in the way that people, um, preach to get a job or to be good at copy. Like, again, I, that's like my own soapbox. So let's talk about this letter. Best way to get clients as a newbie. Listen to me now, disrupt. If you pitch yourself about this, do not make this mistake. And instead of saying do not, how about stop? Stop making this mistake. If you pitch yourself by telling prospects you're brand new to copy game, you'll never hear back from them. So don't do that. But how do you get experience if no one will hire you without experience? Well, that's where persuasion tricks come into play. Too much words. No, well, that's where persuasion tricks come in. One particularly effective method I found is a weird authority shortcut that creates instant credibility. And no, it isn't building value in some... Uh, yeah, I'm going to leave it. I like this polarization, this emotionally charged language. And no, it isn't building value in some stupid Facebook group. Double, triple, a thousand times now. I've never once considered hiring a single writer based on how much time they wasted on Facebook. Because all you need is, I hate the word this, one simple authority hack and your chances of landing a copywriting gig will absolutely skyrocket. Click here before you miss out on another bar. Okay. I don't want you to leave any more money on the table. For all my readers, I don't want you to leave any more money on the table. Click here, bring this out on a five-figure client. And I do believe that. Like, I do, I do. If you're following me, if you've put your trust and faith in my advice, then I definitely don't want you to leave any money on the table. I definitely do want you to succeed. I do want to hear about how something that I said was able to give you some sort of boost in your career or helped you advance or level up in some way. So uh, when you think about it, like this doesn't going on YouTube. I don't know what people think, but it doesn't pay, right? Like, but it's like, yeah, man, like this is just because I enjoy teaching and I'm, I'm hoping to help people out through a process that I think one of the reasons I am so kind of like, I would call it almost bitter at Facebook groups is once I started, once I got hired at a copywriting company and a marketing company and learned how it really works, I realized how bad the advice on Facebook was. And it's one of the reasons why I constantly uh, crap on Facebook groups because those people in there most of the time have never made any money never sold anything. Don't even write copy. And they're asking me for jobs now. All right, cool. Can an avatar also work if you are a person who's looking to buy products? So we'll talk about that one, I think. Like selling a product and using avatar, I, can, I get it. Yeah, man, avatar. But I mean, I think I saw something on, uh, I think about Sean Vosler. He's a guy probably worth following on Facebook. Uh, Sean Vosler had this post the other day. He said, uh, Sell a situation, not a demographic, which I thought was a really cool point. You're selling a person who's in a particular situation. So even when I show you my doll, right, he's just representing a situation because there's plenty of old white guys with gray hair who aren't in his situation. What I'm selling to is the guy who has about 60,000, 100,000, doesn't trust Wall Street, doesn't trust the mainstream media, um, believes in fake news, voted Trump, watches conservative media. Like I'm selling to his situation and the life that he himself embodies. He got crushed in the dot-com uh, bubble. He got crushed in the housing bubble. And now he's just looking for some way that he can just support his family and retire comfortably after all of these uh, financial mishaps. That's a situation. So yeah, you're selling to a situation, not an avatar. All right, thanks so much for tuning in and peace out, copy squad.